Hello everyone, and welcome to the 21st week of Ordinary Time on a Tuesday during the week. Uh, my name is Brandon, and I am a Life Enhancement Coordinator in the Episcopal Church Home. And I am here to do Catholic service with y'all. Um, so, I'll be leading y'all in the service of the Word, and hopefully you are able to bring some spiritual benefit from this. And I'll also lead you all in a brief spiritual reflection based off the readings. Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we take this brief moment today, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you'll bring us to eternal life with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly, or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement, or by a letter alleged from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no one deceive you in any way. To this end, he has been called. To this end, he has also called you through our gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught either by an oral statement or by a letter of ours. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope for his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. Before the Lord, before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the earth with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Alleluia, alleluia. 
the word of the Lord is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these you shall should have done without neglecting the others. Blind guides, you strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You cleanse the outside of cup and dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup so that the outside may also be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the readings today, we observe your cicadas. So in the readings today, you observe we observe two different dynamics at work here. The first, in the first reading, with Paul um, giving an exhortation to the people of faith, saying, do not be disheartened when we say that the Lord is coming. And that this is not something to be feared. At the same time, juxtaposed with that, Jesus is telling the scribes and Pharisees that they're blind to the law, but they care more about the weightier, the lighter things than the weightier things in life. Now, I think that the readings today give us a good balance between these two. Having little concern for our salvation and having too much concern for our salvation. It's the difference between indifference and scrupulosity. scrupulosity. So, Indifference is not that hard of a term to describe. It's very much just part of the English language, you know, when you don't care much about something. But scrupulosity is very much this obsession, obsession over detail that's unhealthy. It's a psychologically considered a form of neurosis. So why I mention this is because Jesus is calling us in many ways to this middle road. The path of holiness is this middle road. We look at the virtue ethics set forth by Aquinas and by Joseph Pieper. Inside these models of virtues, virtue is very much placed between two different medians. Um, for example, when we look at the virtue of temperance, temperance being this moderation of self, we balance ourselves between one extreme of being reckless and the other extreme of being overindulgent. And virtue is finding that middle ground where we aren't throwing caution to the wind, nor are we paralyzed by caution. Um, and very much holiness is the same way. Which I'm not saying lack on your holiness. What I'm saying is that Jesus is calling us to this middle way to not be so concerned in the details that we lose the main point, which is to fall in love with the world that God created, to fall in love with God himself. Jesus also says in the gospel, the greatest of these commandments, are to love thy neighbor and to love God with all your heart, with all your mind. That is the most crucial part of the gospel, that God sent his son to die for our sins for that exact reason, to love. At the same time, not to throw caution to the wind, not to dismiss morality, not to dismiss God's work in our life. Because in that sense, we're not giving God the respect that he created us to have. You're not giving God the love that he deserves. This median is really defined as love. But often people look at religion and they see it as Too much rule following in many cases. I've heard that too many times in my life. 
So then what they do is they pendulum swing really to this other side of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And I think today in the gospel, Jesus is talking about how he isn't saying to the Pharisees that this dirty cup image he uses, where he says the inside of the cup is filthy, but the outside is clean. He isn't saying this to say that this is necessarily terribly wrong. Jesus wants that cup to be clean. There's no doubt about that. What he's saying he wants the inside and the outside to be clean and not to have a concern about the inside and outside. Um, using a little bit further inside this metaphor of the cup, Jesus is also calling us to have not only this exterior of being faithful, but an interior of being faithful. In the end of the day, it's probably the more important of the two. So I leave you with this. It's just a brief reflection on the gospel today. But to just really work towards that median, to not be too hard on yourself, but at the same time not to ignore our responsibility to love, our responsibility to preach Jesus to every person that we meet. That is the Christian message. And that's never going to be something that I'm going to say is what is important in life. That Jesus is, per excellence, the greatest relationship that we're called to have in this life. So, just spend some time during this COVID period inside your rooms watching this prayer service, um, this service of the word, to really reflect on what parts of your life can you modify a little bit to reach that median that God's calling us to. Now in this moment, let's take this moment to offer up intentions for the world. Um, Then we'll have a moment of silence, and then I'll offer this prayer over the offerings. Offerings being your prayers and petitions. Whatever you want to bring to this word, service of the word, bring it at this time to the silence of your hearts. We're gathering it together. So for the Universal Church, for Holy Father Pope Francis, Archbishop here inside the Archdiocese, uh, Bernard Hebda, his auxiliary Andrew Cousins, all the clergy of the Archdiocese, all the lay faithful of the Archdiocese. That we may grow in a greater imitation of Christ and allow the Spirit to work through us for the salvation of souls. Let us pray to the Lord Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders and different community leaders, that we can all work towards the common good and to a better sense of justice and a better respect of humanity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially here at Episcopal Homes, for those in our COVID unit who at this time are suffering, those across the world who've been afflicted by COVID-19 and the coronavirus. That God may give consolation in their lives. God may give them speedy recovery, if it be his will. And that the families affected by this may also find comfort inside the promises of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time of great racial uh, tension in this country, let us also pray that we may get a better sense of love of our neighbor, regardless of their nationality, their religion, the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, regardless of any part of them, that they are beloved children of God, that we may see them as such. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And to take this moment to offer your own intentions in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. 
O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now this is the time when we would offer, um, we would prepare for the gifts to be offered on the altar for um, the communion rite. But obviously this is not what this is. So, um, let us all gather together and pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. At this moment, I'll lead you all in a spiritual communion. Um, in the spiritual communion, we can join Christ, though we may not see him now in the Blessed Sacrament, that we can take this time to offer up these prayers to communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and desire you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you now sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself fully to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain in us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life, amen. Let us now all go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for listening to the Catholic service and I look forward to doing future videos for you all.